Welcome back everybody, I'm out and it's a Friday afternoon and I'm in the Dumfries and Galloway National Park. I've just uh, charged up my drone, my phone and a couple other bits and pieces on this wee natty all powers power station. Quite neat, they've sent it to me so thank you very much to those guys. I've been using it on and off and I haven't done a review on it yet but I keep it in the car and I use it to plug in all the electronics before I go because there's just not enough plug points in the car. It also came with uh, solar panels as well, so I, I don't normally use them unless I'm at home. But it's brilliant to be able to charge up the whole thing and not have to worry about actually drawing on the power from the house, especially at the price you pay at the moment. Anyway, I'm in Dumfries and Galloway National Park. I'm going to head up a hill for an overnight. It's Friday and I've got a brand new tent to test, which I'll show you shortly. Very rare in the UK and very little on YouTube about it. So I'm really interested to try it and hoping it might be the tent that I hang on to. Never seen that kind of format of sign before, Carrick Resilience Team. That's cool. Five minutes in and I may have under underestimated how boggy it would be. I've already got wet feet. I'm only wearing my Salomon XA Pros. As you can maybe see in the distance there, the parking is really busy. I, me. 25 minutes in. I'm on Shalach on Minach in the Galloway Forest Park. Been here once before and stayed up here with my wife, but we didn't summit. We came a bit lower just because there was a lot of cloud and wind. I'm hoping to summit camp tonight. Uh, so yeah, it's 28 degrees. It's like summer has come back with a vengeance. So I'm taking it very slowly, trying not to break a sweat and, and just use up too many salts. I know there's a loch, I think, further up, about another mile or so. I'll top up with everything before I go to the summit itself. And that should keep me going for tonight. Anyway, amazing day, not a soul to be seen. Always the same in the Galloway Hills. So, so quiet. The only downside is the paths tend to be less maintained, so they're a bit manky. So far, but hopefully it'll dry up. There's a wee key ring. I'll make that up later. Okay, just under an hour in. And just taking a wee breather, get some water down me before I dehydrate. It really is strong sunshine, 28 degrees, I'm feeling it. Not so much the weight of the pack, but just the sheer heat, exhaustion. That's Cornish Loch down there, uh, and back to Stincher Bridge. If you look away out over that way, somewhere over there, is there was a craig in the haze. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is where Jan and I camped the last time a few years back. I think that was pre-Covid, just on this plateau. That was just had enough by then. Although we did go up and do the summit and came back down after dinner, which is up ahead of me, probably about another hour, I think. And I should be on the summit plateau and find the spot. It is so hot. Still in the high 20s up here, I think. Wow. Absolutely roasting. That's my fill up point just in the hollow. There's a tiny wee locking, which I'll uh, I'll drink as much as I can there and then fill up as much as I can. I've not really got a big container with me or a big platypus, but hopefully enough to keep me hydrated and have cold food tonight. Somewhere up on the summit, which I think actually the true summit's to the left, but somewhere either here or maybe along that long edge there. Nice view down into the, I think that's, is that the southern reaches of Loch Doon? I'm not sure. Oh, wow. It's quite deep actually. A lot deeper than I expected. Oh, that's nice. Just as I was filling up the water bottles there, I noticed some very strange looking underwater creatures swimming about. Oh, God knows what they are, not fish. Um, yeah, a bit of a weird one. It's a very, very deep little locking. I cannot see the bottom of it very quickly. If you go in there for a swim in the morning, maybe if I was brave, but I think it's got its own Loch Ness monster. I'm refreshed, soaked my head, washed my face. Unfortunately, put suntan oil right in my eyes, but never mind. And uh, yeah, I'll show you around quickly. Just in this plateau, I've got about another half an hour, I think, to the towards the top. Absolutely blazing sunshine. There's no shade, which is my only worry. I think I'll get the tent up early and get undercover. Don't want to get sunstroke. Quite a nice view looking down towards the loch down there. Uh, not a soul. Seen nobody, heard nothing. Amazing. Yeah, I think although this is the trick point, I think the highest point is over to the left, somebody told me. However, I'll dump the pack, go for a wander over there, check it out. But the whole, the whole area up here looks quite good for camping, if a bit exposed. And the great massif of the Merrick behind it there, look, which you can walk over to, I believe. I'm not going to do it today, though. Yo! Uh, 
Two hours four, including a lot of filming and farting about basically. That's okay. I'm going to head over to that high point as well and we'll check that and then we'll look for somewhere to camp. I think this is officially the highest point, which I didn't get to the last time actually. So it's good just to get there. So you have done it. Great view of the Merrick and uh, over to the lockins to the side of it. I can't remember what they're called. I think one's called Murder Hole, somewhat strangely. Uh, I'm not sure about whether I should camp here or head back. I'm going to have a wee recce around see what I can find. Whew. I just had to get out of the sun. I've been walking about for ages looking at potential sites. I'm never happy with any of them, but I'm hoping between these two rocks or bind in the wind and the sh just shielded by one of those rocks but give me a wee area to cook and to sit and hopefully still get a view of the sun going down it's the main tent poles and one vestibule so I think about 1.3 kilos for the main tent and I think about another 400 grams 300 400 grams for the vestibule basically two eastern carbon poles one thing i did notice though was and there's always been issues with seems to be issues with eastern carbon poles there's a slight kink in this one you can see it's not quite straight as if the ferrule inside is slightly out of line i've tried to straighten it up but it's it's not really doing it having said that i don't think there's much of a gap so i may be being overly fussy and then there's a wee brow pole uh, for the vestibule, just the one carbon fibre again, same thickness, they seem to be about, I don't know, I'm guessing at the moment, I'll check, 8 to 9 mil thick, probably 8.6 to 9. Right, that's the main tent up, that wasn't too bad apart from I kept losing a peg or two in the heather. But uh, I'll show you around. I haven't guyed the front yet because the vestibule goes on and then I have to remove the guys and put them in a different way. So we'll leave them for the moment. You've got a rear vent and a kind of stiffened hoop for that. It comes in breathable future light fabric and supposed to be waterproof and taped, but we'll never know till we try this. And that's it from the other side there. You see, it's very simple kind of x-shaped poles i'll take you inside in a second and show you uh 106 centimeters wide i think so yeah tight you kind of sleep head to foot very much an assault tent check out this very high step area here to keep the snow out so the door is more like a hatch than a door you kind of have to kind of jump over it hurdle into your tent so the vestibule attaches at various points using a plastic toggle system and it just goes through this nylon webbing and it's held, you'll see it in a variety of places right up here and then just goes right over the top of the tent and we'll just pop in the brow pole now and get the rest of it up The brow pole on the vestibule goes into its own strap and then connects into the uh, the main tent corner through the same eyelet Right there you go, vestibule up as well now um, I've only done this once before in the garden it's pretty straightforward to be honest it's not designed to be a faff Pretty quick for an assault tent. Not as quick as say the MSR Advanced Pro where the poles go on the outside, which I really like. But the MSR Advanced Pro does not have its own vestibule. It'd be good if they brought one out. Anyway, that adds a hell of a lot of length to it. You should see the room inside now. Mahusive in comparison. But I think a lot of the time, like today, I could probably just have used the main tent at 1.3 kilos. And I don't need this because it's just for cooking and storage, which I could throw inside when I'm solo. But two of us, um, if I use it with my wife, it'll be really handy. And in winter, just for cooking, getting changed before you get into the main tent. Right, I'm getting in. Uh, sun is killing me. I need to get under cover. So there's the inside, guys. It is minimalist. Um, so there are no pockets. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang the stuff sacks. And I can probably use them as little pockets. There's one hanging loop at the top for a torch. Um, you'd have to string up, I don't know how you would do it, but you might have to string up your own drying lines. I haven't really looked properly yet. The floor is spectra. So it looks real, I mean it is thin, but it's got a kind of heavy weave in it. So I don't know how puncture proof that is, but I've put a kind of polycro ground sheet underneath. You've got this rear, as I say, stiffened vent. Not quite big enough to escape from, but pretty generous, no mesh on it. 
So hopefully give, that gives you some idea. I think officially it's 90 deep, but to me it looks a lot more. It looks like about a metre and a half from the uh, from the bottom of the floor. It looks absolutely massive. So two packs plus cooking and all that should be no problem at all. Uh, the cavern poles fit with Velcro tabs inside, so that's very standard stuff you see with a lot of these assault tents. They are a wee bit fiddly, these ones are smaller. I wouldn't want to do them in uh, mitted hands. I think you'd be struggling in the middle of winter. Unlike some of the black diamond and whatnot, which would make them slightly chunkier, as do the rab tents. But everything again is just really about saving ounces. Well, it certainly seems pretty spacious for solo use anyway. I've got gear everywhere in my usual shambles. And uh, yeah, absolutely tons of room. And I'm just trying to cool down, get a bit of breeze through, but stay at the sun. See, I've also used the stuff sacks as pockets. I've got three of them hanging from pole corners. I've had to go tonight with a crux stove because I lost the pot stand on my Soto Windmaster the other night during the week. That video's yet to come out. Um, that'll come out after this one, just for reasons of a sponsor. And you'll see there's a wee bit of kit in it they wanted to hold back on. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this thing's all right, but there's a wee bit of a problem with the gas burner. I don't know what it is. There's a loose screw or something, so it tends to change pressure all the time. So it's not ideal. I keep it as a backup. Very, this fabric is it just seems so almost see-through, not not thin, but if it doesn't breathe, I'll be amazed because it really transmits light through it, and you can see absolutely everything on the outside, including midges. I'm on my own, which is kind of nice, not so kind of daunting slightly. Thought I did a good job of packing today, but no, forgot my spoon. <laughs> ah, so I've had a quiche and then I'm going to turn this into a spoon. So there you go, that's my spoon made out of the quiche packet and I'm going to have a wee chicken salad to finish. Well, as you can see, it's got a wee bit misty now. Sun's beginning to set, uh, probably about a, an hour, yeah, I think. And kind of fog's rolling in a wee bit, same over the Merrick as well. Anyway, I'm fed with my makeshift spoon. I'm going to get some gin and tonic open and some crisps and enjoy that as well. And hopefully get some stargazing tonight. A uh, big thanks to Manly who sent me this tactical windproof uh, tactical series. They've got a whole variety of jackets on their website. A lot of them are kind of fashion based. But they've got a few outdoor things that I find quite interesting. So they sent me one of these, which is kind of parachute fabric. Um, just a windproof, basically. Ultra light. I took it to London last week and used it as my main jacket. Uh, just because it was so packable. It went in my hand luggage. You can get in a variety of colours. I quite like this khaki, though. Quite nice. And it's, uh, it's got a built-in hood. It goes under the collar. So thank you to Manly for that. It's, uh, it's actually just nice because it just keeps that chill off. Because it is getting a wee bit colder now. A bit misty. Um, so yeah, ideal, and it packs to nothing. Anyway, uh, sun's going down, there hasn't been a single soul to the summit, amazing. Okay, we're on dessert now, a mature pudding. That's how some people describe me. Yeah, the vestibule is massive in here. It's almost like another tent. Tons of room. The door only opens on one side here. So you kind of exit on the left. I see the odd tiny little speck of liquid on the, the coating on the inside, the, the, the mesh if you like. Just a tiny little dot here and there. But uh, yeah, it doesn't feel damp at all. And it doesn't seem to be any worse above me where you'd expect it with the moisture. But there is a bit of a breeze coming through and a top vent open here and a slight vent here. So, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'll know by tomorrow morning exactly just how future light works. As it's very well sealed, it has a snow flap all the way around. So I reckon in the winter, it's actually a lot better. Also, where it meets the tent around here, is much tighter sealed than many a, an assault tent I've had. So if you had like a lot of um, snow drifting, it'd be less likely to fill up in here. Fabric is very, very quiet in the wind. So yeah, I'm quite impressed so far. If it's waterproof, 
and if it performs well in the rain, then yeah, it could really could become a go-to and the other tents get sold. So the outside of the future light is certainly wet. There's the beads of water everywhere on it. If you compare it with the Spectra, I don't know if you can see the difference. It tends to look a bit more washed out and sort of almost running. Uh, yeah, so and it dries the bone inside. Well, good morning everybody. It was a very damp and windy night. The tent, fantastic strength, really stable, didn't have any worries about it at all. And very, very quiet with this fabric in the wind and the way it's well braced. Just a very, very big difference from the North tent or a single hoop tent. So that was fine. Um, absolutely everything is damp. Um, and I mean, generally just the kind of atmosphere is just very, very humid. Everything is soaking on the outside and as a result during the middle of the night there was some quite quite a lot of condensation on the inside of this on the future light where it started to run a wee bit here and there in little driblets so it didn't perform any better or any worse than event and I want to show you something to explain exactly what seems to happen and it's common to all single skin tents. I'd love to get um, Tom and Ireland's view on this actually with his Samaya because I don't understand how you can overcome the physics of this. But what I did notice is if you look at where the nylon comes over the tent, i.e. the porch, totally dry and then damp. So what's happening is this is breathing, but if it wets out on the outside, even in beads, um, it stops the moisture transferring through it. It's already beginning to improve. So what are you seeing is this now beginning to dry out, but during the night it has nowhere to go. Um, and so the moisture is just trapped in the inside. It can't get through the water molecules on the outside. The only thing I would say is it appears to be waterproof and the tape seams work because that was about as wet as you'll ever get. Um, and I've also done a test with a watering can and just generally soaked it, but I'm going to leave it up for one night and drive in rain, which is forecast the next couple of days to test it. So yeah, it has got the same issues that all single skin tents have. For overnights, singular overnights, it's not really an issue for me. It's the kind of camping I do. Yeah, laggy morning. Very claggy. It hasn't wetted out per se, it's still beading. But even at that, that just stops the fabric breathing. Leave no trace as always. In fact, the very first time I've never had to pick one extra bit up. Not a thing around here. So, thanks very much everyone for watching. It's an early start. I've got the air show at Press Week today. I'm going to go all the way home, get a shower and come back out again. So, thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the wee micro adventure and a chance to look at a fairly unusual tent if you've been considering it. Um, I'll give you more updates on that when I try it a couple more times, but I think it needs a bit more practice and a couple of different nights just to try it in different conditions anyway thank you again and i'll see you out there again soon cheers just now